Uh, so in all likelihood, uh, it does appear that this will continue till Ramadan. Uh, I'm just being realistic. I hope to be proven wrong and I pray that inshallah tomorrow everything is lifted up. But we also tie our camel. And the way things are uh, progressing, um, I think it is uh, almost inevitable if things continue in their natural course that five weeks from now we will still be pretty much under uh, a type of lockdown that will not allow mass congregations of a thousand, two thousand people in our masajid. Nor would it be wise to do so uh, unless uh, something changes dramatically. If that is the case, uh, then we need to find uh, an alternative mechanism to keep our iman strong. Now, I will be the first to say, as somebody who's for the last 40 plus years of my life, Ramadan has always been associated with community and masjid. There is no Ramadan of my life except that it is associated with the masajid and taraweeh and community. And to be brutally honest, at least 20 of those years of my life, Alhamdulillah, the Ramadans have even been associated with Mecca and Medina and not just anywhere, but actually Mecca and Medina uh, for so many years of my life, they're associated with that. So the, the concept of having a Ramadan without the masjid and without community and without the jama'ah of people, it is alien to my cultural upbringing. That having been said, we have to be brave enough to acknowledge the Sahaba did not have Ramadan the ways we have Ramadan. There was no taraweeh prayer in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu There were no community iftars that the were, 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 we are accustomed to. They would eat at home individually. They didn't have enough surplus food to have massive feasts. So in some ways, perhaps we will have to rediscover the spirit of Ramadan as it really used to be. And now me and you, we are so weak that we needed the community to help us. You know, well, let's be honest here. Yani to pray behind a qari of the Quran, to pray behind, yani, you know, in the haram, you know, Sheikh Ali Hudayfi or Sheikh, you know, when I was growing up, Sheikh Jabir, we used to pray Ali Jabir, you know, in Medina, Sheikh Dubayti, when I was there. Yani, subhanAllah, it's a different world, right? And it's just, it, it takes you places that I don't think I could go alone at home. So we go to the masjid and we're lifted with the community. But the Sahaba themselves, they never prayed taraweeh by and large, other than two nights as we know, they never pray taraweeh in the time of the Prophet ﷺ in community. They would pray Isha and then they would come home and then they would pray Qiyamul Layl on their own. So we will have to rediscover the original spirit of Ramadan and that is simplicity. You know guys, let's be honest here, we all want those fancy iftars laid out. Well then, let this be the Ramadan that we have a simple iftar. Let this be the Ramadan we actually uh, you know, uh, and actually not gain weight because you know we we gain weight in most Ramadans. Let this be the Ramadan. We will be healthy, all of us. Sit down with the family and say, okay, let's cut back all those samosas. I know you're gonna kill me after this, but hey, you know, let's try our best to have a healthy Ramadan. Then tell your families, let's come together, families only, right? Not nobody from outside the house. Families only. Every night, let's do something. Let's do a, a Quran circle. Let's do Isha together. Uh, maybe Taraweeh together or Taraweeh separately. But we encourage one another in the households to be able to rediscover the spirit of Ramadan. And you know, again, to be technical, uh, Taraweeh prayer is actually Tahajjud prayer. And the best time to do it is not right after Isha. The best time to do it is actually the last third of the night, which is before uh, Fajr. And if Allah wills that we are not going to work and we're working from home at that point in time, and if Allah wills that we're able to transfer a little bit of timing here and there, perhaps some of us can try to revive that spirit of Ramadan where we are praying taraweeh as actual proper tahajjud and qiyamul layl, where we wake up at 3 a.m. And we do uh, Qiyamul Layl and Tahajjud at that time. And then we have an iftar. And then we have to go to work. And then we come back early, meaning work is going to be in our own houses, maybe even. Then come back early and sleep. And then sleep, you know, in the afternoon, as was the Sunnah of the Prophet. So, in every single disaster and calamity, the believer finds the positives and finds the good. Perhaps. Perhaps in this Ramadan, we will rediscover. And believe me, I say this with a smile on my face and Allah knows I cannot even imagine because I've never lived it in my life. I've never lived a Ramadan without community and jama'ah and masjid. I've never lived it. This might be the first Ramadan. If it is, 
then I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah azza wa jal will bring us through that Ramadan. He's going to guide us through that Ramadan. He's going to make that Ramadan, maybe even inshallah, the best Ramadan we've ever had. And then inshallah, we hope next year when we get the community back and when we get the Ramadan and the jama'ah back, we will then truly, truly, truly appreciate it. You know, subhanallah, we take things for granted. How we would complain and grumble and moan about, you know, the parkings and about the, you know, the, the uncle next to you that's belching away after eating that heavy iftar and whatnot. And now we're wanting how we wish we can have that, you know, back and now Allah, Allah musta'an. So perhaps we might even appreciate the blessings that we took for granted after this Ramadan. And Allah Azza wa knows best.